So I'm joined by Dr. Shi, and uh, can you tell us a little bit about what you do and uh, dive into some of the research that you focus that it focuses on? Okay, thank you for the invitation. I'm a pathologist working on ovarian cancer research and also diagnostic pathology at Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine. And our research is focused on early detection of ovarian cancer. Mm -hmm. And as everybody knows that early detection is the most important part to prevent the cancer death from this devastating disease. Right. So there's many ways that we can um, do this cancer detection, so CA125, ultrasound, or in combinations. But according to the data that has been published, there's no effective way that we can achieve the goal to reduce ovarian cancer mortality and the morbidity. As a result, the Johns Hopkins ovarian cancer team led by Dr. Bert Vogelstein, Ken Kinsler, uh, Nick Papadopoulos, and uh, myself and many other colleagues work as a team to um, determine whether we can use the general, very non-invasive way we can detect ovarian cancer earlier. So there are two ways to do ovarian cancer res research in terms of early detection. One, I think that's the best way, and uh, hopefully you agree, is to detect precursor lesion of ovarian cancer before it becomes invasive. Right. So the ovarian tissue and the fallopian tube, which is the origin of the ovarian cancer, can be removed surgically in a timely fashion. So this is the primary goal, and which will be most effective but so this catching is more it before it gets going. Yes. Yeah. But the most more practical way is to detect ovarian cancer and a lower volume disease. And uh, in those women who has already had ovarian cancer. Right. So basically it will not offer the cure, but it can improve the clinical outcome. As we know, after surgery, the ovarian cancer the residual volume, if, the, if they are really small, or even you cannot say it, then the patient has a good prognosis. So we hope this early detection way that we can uh, impact the women who has a cancer who can be diagnosed much earlier. Right. Then their outcome can be improved. Now the question that you want to ask is, how can we do that? Right, <laughs> you, you already know, that's my next question. So there's many ways I said, just, we just discussed that you can draw the blood, mm -hmm. CT DNA, so-called cell uh, tumor release DNA that's circulating in patient's blood. Then we can use a genetic tool to identify the mutations. Because the mutation is really inherent to cancer cell rather than the normal uh, tissues. So maybe it's really a good marker. But the problem is ovarian cancer incidence is really low. So if it test positive, it's, you never know it's coming from ovary. It may come, be coming from the lung, breast, colon, um, other, other the organs. So it triggers us to think about one way that, that everybody knows this, is a pap smear. So pap smear is, is widely accepted for the detection of HPV right? and uh, to detect the precursor lesion of cervical cancer. But as you can consider the anatomy of the female genital tract, so like my body is a uterus, okay? Mm -hmm. So my, my arms are the fallopian tubes. Okay. And uh, maybe this is ovary. So basically, normally the fallopian tubes the, especially the fibrillated ends. Um, these ends are grabbing the ovary. Right. So there are accumulated evidence to show that ovarian cancer does not develop from the ovary mm -hmm. itself. Rather, it comes from the fallopian tube. Right. So then that's, that's quite intriguing, but also very interesting, but, and also offered another new opportunity for us to think about how we can early detect ovarian cancer. 
by using the approach that we can sample the tumor cells much closer to fallopian tube and ovary. So the, the test, BERT, Dr. Bert Vogelstein and John Sopkin developed called PEP gene, PAP and GENE, -E, PEP gene. So basically, it's a PEP smear, but we analyze the ovarian cancer related mutations. In that way, we can detect, for example, P53, which is the most important cancer driver gene in ovarian cancer. If there's a mutation, then the patient needs to be further evaluated right. to see whether she got the cancer or not. So this is a PEP gene test has been um, been tested in in our study. It showed it showed forty six percent sensitivity and almost one hundred percent specificity, meaning that about half of the patients their ovarian cancer can be detected just by Pap smear. Wow! So I think that's quite interesting. So right. we are going to develop the version number two to improve the sensitivity. Mm -hmm. And uh, also we want to uh, include thousands of women in the clinical trial to, to determine whether this kind of methods or improve the method in the version number two can really impact the early detection. And hopefully we can reduce ovarian cancer uh, death. That's the most important. Right. Right, because it, it seems to have the, a higher mortality rate um, than, for instance, like breast cancer. Right. So early detection, it goes without, without saying that this is the most important test in the whole ovarian cancer research field. Right. Because many people develop new drugs, and the pharmaceutical company are really interested in that. And, um, but to, to the perspective of a pathologist, if you did not catch the ovarian cancer before they invent, everything will be too late. And then this is because intratumor heterogeneity, meaning we, inside the one tumor, they have a different subclones mm -hmm. or different varieties. Right. So no matter what kind of drug the patient receives, it only can kill part of them. Right. Then the new ones will develop into the, um, the, the totally new landscape of the ovarian cancer. Right, so, so then quite, you're going to find yourself having to create a drug for each, like I think the last doctor mentioned, barcode of uh, of mutation that you right. have. So it's much easier then to catch it. Prevention is always better than treatment. Right, because treating metastatic diseases or advanced diseases is just a, like a very challenging task. And we, it seems that we will not win the war against ovarian cancer. Yeah. So in our belief that cancer prevention and early diagnosis is the best answer for this. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for that information. Um, I will say, uh, our, just to kind of send your personal message, and I think the main one that you've sent today is, is early detection is, is very important. And we're glad that, you know, people are working on the front lines to kind of advance those, uh, those kind of treatments and, and uh, detection approaches. If I could ask you what your message would be to our survivor community, um, as right. far as those that are currently right. undergoing treatment that, you know, since the early detection is in its, you know, early phases. I think the most important part um, for this early detection is not for those women already have cancer. Right. I think those need to, to be treated and to follow the, the guideline and suggestion of um, their physicians. Mm -hmm. But the take home message for early detection is for your, your relatives relatives, like your daughters, or your mom, or your sisters, yeah. they need, need to be screened. So they will not repeat the same disease like you. And uh, of course, I think ovarian cancer with a modern therapy, you have a high chance to survive. But for those has not been um, affected, I think this is a time to offer them the great opportunity to cure, I mean cure the ovarian cancer. So my question for you then, because early detection um, is directly related to awareness, and that's something that Overcome really pushes um, on the front lines as far as you know raising awareness for ovarian cancer. Um, can you tell us um, why that relation is so important between you know ovarian cancer awareness and early detection? Of course, 
Um, I think this is quite important question. So as you know, ovarian cancer has been dubbed as a silent killer mm -hmm. because the symptoms usually are very vague. And uh, until you have really become sick, then that's too late. So the awareness will be focused on that you need to pay attention to your body. Any, anything that you feel abnormal from your past years, you need to see your doctors. And also your family history is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, if your mom has a breast and ovarian cancer or your sisters, I think you need to be under the radar screen and uh, tell your doctor directly that you have this kind of family history. So this kind of awareness that will allow the, the women to, to report to their gynecologists to request whether they need to be um, test for this kind of pap gene or other uh, equivalent tests in the future. And I think in that way, we can focus on detecting early cancer, ovarian cancer, stage one and two. As you know that stage one and two, if they detected earlier, the chance to be cured is much higher, is about 75%. Wow. In contrast to late stage, which is only less than 35%. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. I mean, that's, that's vital information. It just goes to show that if raising awareness, if we can get that to meet with early detection, we'll really, really kind of up the numbers of, of survival for patients. So thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you for having me.